Welcome to Fight Sport Manila, the podcast, hosted by that same dude you see in every video, Paolo Gonzalez. Alright guys, welcome to the Fight Sport Manila podcast. So this is where we get to talk about things longer and it comes out faster because we don't have to edit videos and stuff. Today we're going to talk about pro wrestling. And joining me today is none other than the expert himself, the great Paul Christian. Hey man, uh, first of all, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I just love watching this stuff. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. Come on man, you've always been a part of the show. No, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm not paid, so... <laughs> Uh, I suppose it's the reason why <laughs> I'm here, but uh, uh, also I, I'd like to think they got me because I watch a lot of wrestling, so there. It's mostly because you watch a lot of wrestling. No one gets paid here. Okay. Just so the listeners are clear. Th- that's nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, man, let's talk about uh, recent news in pro wrestling. Uh, then, of course, our main topic is going to be the... MWF wrestling showcase uh, during history con so you and I uh, we were present during the second day I was uh-huh. also there during the first day but now it's the third day I don't think we could go because we're stuck in the rain but we really I really wanted to go just to be honest man yeah well uh, the, the con is good it's it's a fun experience especially if you get to, to see the wrestlers MWF um uh, the the the, the Arnis, uh MMA fight yeah Wego Soto yeah, yeah those guys um it's it's all fun but you know stay home if you can't that's a that's a smart thing to do yeah I mean what time did we get home last night oh dear I forgot uh, uh around twelve maybe twelve yeah twelve ish twelve ish and then we left uh eight. And we were one of the lucky ones to get the uh, the MyCab taxi. Shout out to MyCab, man. We got a taxi fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for keeping us uh, alive and energetic the entire day, we had Nitro. Nitro 7 <laughs> brew, man. That, I don't know the exact name, but that's some good coffee. I- I'm just glad I found <laughs> discovered it with you guys. Uh <laughs> I uh I had no idea they they had one in Mega Mall, um, so I'm probably gonna check it out. I I had no idea also they had one in uh, SM Annex, and mm. man, it is one of the best coffees. I mean, they're not paying us anything to promote them, but it's some good coffee. It's I don't know what's what's with the nitro is is it because they use the same technologies as uh, soft drinks or something i don't know i'm i'm stupid so <laughs> probably shouldn't <laughs> ask me <laughs> uh it's uh, it's good so if you happen to see uh, any of their stalls or uh, branches just just go for it. just try it yeah you know just try it and it's gonna be really amazing Okay, so um, before we go off topic and talk about coffee, because the coffee is really good, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we could we could talk about it for hours, but <laughs> yeah, and Nitro Seven, if you're if you're <laughs> listening to let's this, give us some free coffees. All right, <laughs> okay. <be> so <laughs> what do we have? <laughs> okay, let's let's go. Let's do a quick rundown on the wrestling news, and I want to know your thoughts regarding it. Okay, sure. Number one, Brock Lesnar's contract allegedly won't expire he's going to uh, simultaneously work on the wwe and the ufc uh man are your thoughts regarding that it's a work he's gonna leave yeah man definitely (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh come on let's just consider what the the effects of this would be if he would decide to stay as champion that would not bode well for roman reigns who is his current contender who's already lost to, to, to him for what three four times I already think it's five man five I'm not I'm, um, correct me if I'm wrong man and I don't care what you say about that cash in with Seth Rollins before 
he was completely owned, had his few spots, but come on. They booked Brock as a monster, and he's made every single contender look weak. You know, it's good for him, but what do you do when he goes away, right? Yeah, I'm saying, man, if you'd notice, the only person Brock jobbed to was Goldberg. And Goldberg wasn't even there for like uh, until WrestleMania. He just won the title, then he lost it to Brock. You know, if I was Brock, okay, let's just do it. It's for the fans, whatever. Uh, I get paid. We get to redo the bad stuff. <laughs> they had a match before at WrestleMania. Yeah, twenty, I think. Yeah, uh, it was really well. It wasn't a bad match. It was just badly booked. So I think. This the, the the most recent feud between uh, him and Goldberg. It, uh, it was a better lead up to to that match, so they fixed that one. <laughs> that time it happened, the fans know that he and Goldberg was leaving, so they just booed it. And the only thing that uh, that saved that show was when Stone Cold stunned both of them. Yeah, thank God for Stone Cold. But going back to the topic, Brock will uh, Brock's gonna leave. And it's probably for the best. But you know, it it um it does have it, it, its positives. His run, uh, it, you know how the title is. I don't mm-hmm. want to see it get defended every week, um, because it's supposed to be super rare. You know, you have to work for it to to challenge for the belt. You can't just get your title shots. Uh, you know, uh, kayfabe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't just give it to anyone in the roster in, in a regular basis. So. Uh, it's nice that they have competitions for it, but you know it doesn't pop up. You, you gotta show up for the shows. At least you know you have to show up and and talk about how nice it is to have that belt around you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, uh, I I completely forgot the first question. <laughs> what were we talking about? We were talking about yeah. We're talking about you know if it's true that that he's going to be like simultaneously. I I do agree with you. I think it's just a work because. The many times they say he was going to leave that the time he retains and, and this one time wherein he will stay, <laughs> stay. no he's gonna leave. Um he's done. There's, De- there's definitely. no and he's, there's no one else that they can put in front of him that's gonna create that excitement again. John Cena is what, forty plus and is basically ready to retire um you got guys like roman there's roman reigns and then there's a bunch of other guys um there's finn there's uh, elias uh, bobby which are really good workers but there they don't quite have it Mm -hmm. at least uh, not in vince mcmahon's eyes yeah that's the thing man vince is like so fixated with muscular men and but that's what I thought before. Um, do you remember, like, Rusev? He was pushing Rusev when fans aren't uh, taking him in. And the moment that Rusev Day right now is so over, he is losing. He keeps losing, so. I think, and they've done this before. I think it's because they think the the, the character could take a hit. Mm-hmm. Um, he's so popular, he could probably take the hit, like, lose <laughs> but it's gonna be the Dolph Ziggler situation again the guy's gonna keep losing and until he loses heat um, and that's probably done intentionally I hope not because the guy is very talented uh, Rusev is a, is a unique wrestler at this time um, um, so I hope not but it's what they do when they don't like someone. <laughs> they, it, if they're popular and they don't like him, they they put him on uh, what on on matches with up and comers, and then they lose. And yeah. there you go. That's the Zack Ryder situation again. Anyways, let's go to another news. If you have your workmates listening to this, uh-huh. there will be a women's pay per view. Uh, oh. Entitled Evolution. Oh, definitely. Uh, I have a workmate who will be so happy to know about this. Um, I mean, she knows about it. Um, I'm also happy about this news. Um, it's we we have a we have a very talented roster of women in WWE right now. 
True, true. Um, I hope they it doesn't culminate to just a just a rumble match. It's just a brass and panties. Yeah, no, don't do that. We're way <laughs> past that. Let's put those talented workers uh, to good use. We got Sasha Banks. We got Charlotte, of course, and then there's a host of other NXT ladies who who could really step up and uh, and and bring something to the table. So I hope. Uh, they're they're given a, a chance, a legitimate chance, and not just a token pay per view thing. Like, okay, this is this is your one night of the ye- uh, one night of the year, and then you go back to being uh, well, lesbian lovers. <laughs> that's the <what> storyline. <laughs> that's what they usually do with with, with, <laughs> the, with the wrestlers. So, uh, come on, yeah. there's have to be that could happen. I mean, they could do something like. They, they, you know, Brock. Uh, the the storylines with Brock is grounded on reality. Like right? he's a dangerous. Well, we do it with women. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of dangerous women in the <laughs> roster. I thought you were gonna say Brock has a lesbian relationship. No, no. <laughs> I mean, what what I'm trying to say is, uh, try to do something with these wrestlers. Look for, they need a super heel, like someone who, who would. Uh, maybe Ronda. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, Ronda. I'm sure Ronda would be headlining that pay per view. And then, and then you know, make her like the, give her like the, uh, a, a bit like a Brock Lesnar type character. Although, minus the not showing up for shows. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's the initial plan for Ronda. But I think it is Ronda herself who wanted, who said that she wanted to be on live events on shows which is good but there's this rumor it's just gonna last until wrestlemania because she wants to start having babies and i guess this is a one year money run for rowdy ronda rousey and you know she's pretty good I, uh, you know i hope i hope she doesn't uh talk about it a lot like that's I hope that's not what she says outside because it's gonna kill her momentum and the excitement. I mean, you know, if you know that someone is just gonna go, you're not gonna be as invested with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's why it works with so many. It's why it worked for Brock in the first place. I mean, nobody knows the extent of his contract, nobody knows exactly when or where he'll show up. Mm-hmm. And that adds to that. Although it's again, it has its negatives, but um, it's that it's that uh, it's that unpredictability. So mm-hmm. I hope that even if she's an attraction, um, I hope they, they they talk about it to a minimum. You know, <laughs> the, the her plans mm-hmm. uh, to leave because that's what totally killed Brock in two thousand something. Uh, back back when he was against Goldberg. That's definitely true, and you know, aside from Ronda, I, I really, I really want uh, the WWT to feature something good on Sasha Banks and Bailey. I think they did some good work in NXT. So if ever they're gonna have a one-on-one match or a tag team match, there was there is a rumor for a women's tag team title wherein the champions can go to Raw and SmackDown. That's a very mm-hmm. interesting. Or they can feud. Uh, they just need to build. Uh, create a good build up to uh, a good match. They had one in NXT. Uh, I forgot where they had it. They had two, and and that was amazing. Uh, yeah. Please don't make them lovers. <laughs> they, <laughs> that's that's the laziest way to go. We've seen it with countless women in the past, like AJ and. Yeah, I, I know AJ, and, uh, Mickey James, and Trish. Come on, there's got to be a better, make it a competitive thing or a friend versus friend uh, thing. Doesn't have to have a, it doesn't have to have romantic undertones. <laughs> we're not, yeah, we're not sickos. <laughs> we just want people who, who just, hate each other to fight, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, um, let's go to another topic. Hulk Hogan, he got reinstated in the Hall of Fame. What do you think about that? And if you're unaware, he... He got out of the WWE because he had like a taped recording of him uh, talking uh, racial remarks, and you know, for he he said a lot of uh, stuff that's derogatory. Cause I think there was a black guy dating his daughter Brooke, and uh, he dropped a lot of words. 
Uh-huh. Uh yeah, but that was that's like I don't know if it's two years ago, two three years ago. Oh, it's uh, it's something that they unearthed, something like that. <laughs> no, it's not unearthed. Like, uh, it came out when he said it. Then WWE took him off. Then they just brought him back now. You know, I'm not. I'm actually surprised that I don't know about it. Um, I don't know how to feel about it, to be honest, um, because it's recent. But, you know, he apologized for it. Um, you know, I'm not sure, to be to be very honest. I'm not sure because I don't know how they put someone in the Hall of Fame. Just so you know, like, when he got reinstated, he went to WWE, to the, the roster, and he apologized to everyone. But, you know, through the apologies, guys like Titus O'Neil says that it seems scripted or half fake then oh. the new day were indifferent about it because i think he has like a wwe 24 like similar to the hardy boys have you seen that documentary yeah the, similar to that i think they're gonna make him one but james ellsworth said he seems sincere oh he's white <laughs> okay so I don't know. You don't get the context unless you're part of the people that he targeted, right? Yeah, and, and I guess um, we didn't hear it. It's like with women. You make a joke, you think it it's not sexist, but it is when you review it <laughs> later. Um, and number two, obviously he did it to be part of the Hall of Fame again. Um, Hulk Hogan without wrestling is nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's his bread and butter. Uh, the WWE doesn't need him anymore. Uh, maybe back then. Maybe he's a part of the legacy. But he's also a representative... Uh, he, he, he's a representation of everything that has been wrong with wrestling since the start. <laughs> you have the backstage politics. You have the strongman guys go, right, going man. over the... the the lesser, uh, the the less muscular but <laughs> uber talented guys. Do some further. Uh, the the dumb moves. Uh, <laughs> I mean, come on, who gets killed by a leg drop? Really? Um, well, you don't know. Back in the day, that could be like. Well, people what? have weak chest back then. I don't know. <laughs> like a guillotine uh, or something. Uh, I don't know if I could even legitimately kill you unless you jump off. Uh, like a two-story building <laughs> and that would also kill you in the process it's a dumb move man look he's there it's exciting to see him because he's old it's a novelty oh he still got it something like that right mm -hmm. um but that's it he's he's part of the past let's keep him in the past <laughs> let's uh he, he obviously said <laughs> sorry to to, to be back in wwe's good graces i don't care for this guy Sorry, um, just just let him retire. <laughs> Look, we're talking about a list that has Arnold and a bunch of non-wrestler guys. Donald Trump is, I mm -hmm. think, is also on that list. So, I I don't know whether or not he's in it. I don't think it will matter. I mean, at least not anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't have uh, you don't have guys like Owen Hart in there or. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think they should put Owen there because they put Brett in it. And I guess because he's just an intercontinental champion. But yeah, I guess there, there are some exceptions to the rules, man. I think Benoit should be in the Hall of Fame, but I guess that will never happen. Although it's different. It's, it's two different things. We all know what happened to Benoit. I mean, we're just people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, another one is that, you know, that NJPW and ROH, they have booked Madison Square Garden during WrestleMania weekend. Mm -hmm. And allegedly, it's close to selling out. It's a 15,000 capacity, but the mm -hmm. pre-sale alone was already 12,000. Mm -hmm. And it goes to general public, I think, uh, on Monday. Mm. Good for them. Yeah, and, you know, Vince is furious about it. Well, wonder why. <laughs> oh, come on. If you're Madison Square... Uh, if you want to be relevant again and be taken seriously as a as a, a as a venue for big time events, uh, try to. This is a good move for everyone, um, especially the wrestling promotions. 
uh, th that we mentioned. Um, it puts them out there and it creates a milestone for them. With WWE, it's not as exciting anymore because you know they, they have the money to, to book wherever they want to book their shows. With yeah, the, with, if, the, with, the, with these guys, you get the, you know how we love underdogs, right? Mm -hmm. And WWE is no longer the underdog. And right now, they're pretty much like WCW. And these guys are well, the added to their era. They've w. been around. They're, they've, they've been around for a while. But, you know, yeah, New Japan uh, is being, you know, they've improved their product a lot. You know, they got Rey Mysterio, Chris Jericho. Then they have the Bullet Club, Kenny Omega. I think Kenny Omega is the biggest name in wrestling right now because he fought Xavier Woods uh, in Econ for a Street Fighter game, and they promoted it as the New Day versus the Bullet Club or the Elite. And you know, he's he's a big commodity right now. Do you think they're courting him? They've always been courting him, but it's Kenny Omega who proactively declines because he knows the that you know if he goes to the WWE, there's a huge chance that he might end up like Shinsuke Nakamura instead of like AJ Styles. I is the only one who's doing good right now because he looks the uh, there's a certain template to mm -hmm. who they could you know uh, if you look a certain way mm -hmm. that's that's the certain WWE if you look a certain way. They will probably book you well if you don't. But Shinsuke's doing good right now. Shinsuke's a small guy. Let's just let's just. No, be, he's he's big, man. He's, he's big, but you know, you look at him and then you put him side by side with who they consider as main eventers, and I think Shinsuke is bigger than AJ, if I'm not mistaken. He's but... he's taller, I think, but he's a little slimmer that's uh, his style has also been the, the, the stiff style the kicks and the so i think it works for him he's a slinky dude compared to aj who but i like i like his character now compared to before he is they improved it no speak english <laughs> i just hope that this doesn't end up with him in, <laughs> in a throne carried by Japanese soldiers and <laughs> like, his name was that Kenzo Suzuki right oh boy um, did you watch his promo like why he lost the last man standing match uh, no because <laughs> the referee did not count in Japanese <laughs> See? that's unfair <laughs> it's brilliant but he has to keep they have to keep him yeah. doing sinister stuff. And he's <laughs> U.S. champion now. Yeah, that's the thing in WWE. So the best way to book the U.S. title is to put it on a foreigner. Uh, I don't know why Vince is even wondering why people are starting to pay attention to the other wrestling promotions. Because you look at this. You have a billion-dollar company with a billion-dollar company talent well, at least not in pay but in in, in talent um, and you make them what you put them in storylines where they fart you, you remember that one with Natalia <laughs> they make her fart come on you have a, a technically sound wrestler just do farts and then look how jarring it would be that's her deal and what? then you I wonder why no one said that <laughs> like, you know Ron your best friends with a farter that's that I am thanking all the gods <laughs> that they have not touched that topic again Talia, good wrestler he can give her a fart storyline or Shinsuke good wrestler uh, AJ uh, both of them, wow, they have an opportunity to create a really incredible feud and what do you make them do? Just kick each other's nuts <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, it worked for a while, but it got really old. Man, you can only punch the ball one too many times, you know. Yeah, come on. Uh, they over. <clears throat> I mean, they overdid it. I mean, um, and 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 the worst part is he kept doing it. He's just doing it to everyone. King Shatter. What else? Um, can you think of a wrestler, a good wrestler with a dumb storyline? They they have that. Uh, uh, Perry Saturn and Moppy. That. Yeah, that one. These guys are not cartoon characters. They're wrestlers. So when they get in the ring and they try to build tension, no one's going to believe it. It's going to take 
the take you out of the action, right? Um, there's this other guy. He's in NXT, and then they turned him into this fashion guy. Uh, I know Tyler Breeze. Is that it? even his partner? Fandango. They turned him into a joke. But that, <laughs> I think that went good for both of them. Um, got, did it though? <laughs> it did for their careers, man. I mean, they were jobbers before that, and I think they got the highest rated segment in SmackDown. Oh boy! No joke, man. No joke. Oh man! The fashion. Do they have files. a relationship as well? No. <laughs> okay. I think good. They're PG now, so. All right. No the, more romance. No. I got nothing village. against, the, but it's getting lazy, right? It's their favorite plot twist. They suddenly make these guys like each other. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess uh, you know you beat someone so much, you get that fiery passion. Um. Okay. That. Yeah. Guys, look. This is why these other fledging promotions are getting the attention because people are getting tired of these storylines. If I wanted cartoons, I'd watch cartoons. If I wanted to watch good wrestling, do I go to WWE? That's a question now. Because you, you, you have, uh, yeah, you have a Finn Balor. No fairs WWE. They're giving Seth Rollins a a good run. Uh, but mm-hmm. everyone else, oh boy, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of underutilized sound, but again, they just have three hours. It's not enough to to get a main event oh, spot. Well, no, it's it's long enough. Uh, three uh, SmackDown is doing it better than them. Yeah, they yeah. only have two hours. No, I think SmackDown's three already. What? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's three already. Look, cause... the, the three-hour Raw show feels like a five-hour show because of how dragging the matches could get. I don't believe that they can't squeeze in four other, you know, of other storylines that are good. You just have to be creative about it. The book it like a TV show. It's serialized. Everything happens on Monday has to be followed up by the following Monday. Uh, people will forget about the, the previous Monday, right? Uh, so create a story, create storylines for people. Um, get them involved. Oh, you know, you know what they do when they don't know what to do with you? They just have you show up when to, like like what they did with Bobby Lashley and, mm-hmm. and Roman Reigns. They, they they had to pull him apart. That, that, that shtick that they do when mm-hmm. they, <laughs> when they uh, want to pull them apart, and then this, and then all those other wrestlers in the cat, this is their joke. They send them to catering, right? Uh, mm-hmm. All these other guys that you never see on the card just show up just to break fights. Anyways, before we go any further, let's go to the main event. Yeah, let's... we just checked out um, Manila Wrestling Federation and its wrestling showcase on History Con. Mm-hmm. I was there during the first day, but I, I just saw the morning matches. I want to know your thoughts regarding Manila Wrestling Federation. I think it's your first time seeing a Filipino wrestling promotion it live. Was. It was, and I will say this. Um, it's a fun experience. Um, it's it's not as big and flashy as your, your typical... See, you know, typical wrestling fans, uh, we all know WWE and their brand of entertainment. And uh, it's nice to see something like this uh, on a smaller scale, but the, the the fun and the excitement is still there. You can they replicated that feeling for me. I enjoyed it. It was my first time to see them in action. First time to see the characters. There were stuff that worked for me. A lot of stuff worked for me. There were stuff that didn't, but it's an enjoyable experience. Well, let's uh, try to break it down. Uh category by category let's go first with the production or what do you think of the uh production of mwf considering what they've done with what they have i'm very happy and proud of them um why it's an indie wrestling scene it's an indie wrestling company uh it's it's funded by people who love who love wrestling Mm -hmm. and for that and for what I've watched, you know, I appreciate it and I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, production is, is, I expected it. It's not going to be 
wow, there's a Titan Tron here in the history. Con. No, it's nothing like that. Uh, they don't have the video package. So if you're looking for something flashy like that, WWE brand of wrestling, it's not like that. But um, there's there's a taste of it. They, they have the music. They have the characters. They have uh, the promos. It's fun uh, production. Uh, you know, let's just talk about how smoothly they pulled it off. All right. They did it well. At least that's what I think. Um, the matches went without people getting injured. The the equipment I saw them they were checking on it regularly, like like they were checking a car or something. Um, so they were making sure this the stuff were safe to use. So it's there. Um, it's a pretty simple setup. It's just a ring and a couple of seats, but they were able to create that environment. Um, it, you know, they were given a certain space, but. You can tell that a lot of people in the con um, started to, to pay attention, right? Mm-hmm. So towards, towards the second set, that's when the people started coming around. On my part, though, I, I really like the music, their, their theme music. I think it's something that, you know, if you hear it, you would know, oh, the, it is this promotion, you know. And I think uh, MWF did it, you know. It reminds you of Raw and a more the the theme song I'm just, I'm just talking about the theme song it reminds you of raw or or like the 90s uh, wrestling themes and it's pretty good another thing i like is the ring i've like i said i've been to uh wrestling shows of other promotions and their ring is really amazing in terms of if you do a move the crowd could feel the impact like even a simple suplex feels 10 times more because of the impact that their ring does yeah the ring is pretty good the ring is amazing i thought that you know in the ropes are softer but you know looking at it they could still perform uh top rope moves on it you know i have a question though Uh, Uh, i was asking you during the show the ropes kind of looked like they were covered in tape or is that yeah I think it was covered in tape I think all ropes are covered in tapes that's why if you're watching um, WWE it, during the cruiserweight uh, showdown before on Raw it instantly goes to violet then after a commercial b- break it's back to uh, it's old color I think it's red or are they doing the tricolor I, right I now I kind of think that I, I was thinking they, they covered it in packaging tape that was my impression it's just how it looks. Um, yeah, uh, I think it is co- I'm Correct me if I'm wrong. I think uh, it, it seemed like it's packaging tape to me. But it is for the um, the stability of the ropes. Oh, okay. Then that, that doesn't bother... I mean, it's not something that bothered me. Just mm-hmm. that I just noticed, oh, it's covered in tape. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's the... I think also in a way, it's a, safe, a cheaper way of having colors on your ropes. Right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know nothing about... Um, why there are packaging tapes on rope. But what I do know is that um, the reason why ropes are tight or not, it's because the tighter the rope, the bigger the tension. And the bigger the tension, the easier the ring would collapse. So mm-hmm. if they tighten the rope so much, like in the WWE, the ring itself could snap. Right, like a rubber band. Yeah, like indeed, like a rubber band, okay. and um, I think the WWE has a bigger, has a bigger ring, like in terms of diameter. I think it's twenty by twenty, if I'm not mistaken, or twenty one up, and that's why they they could uh, provide tougher ropes. But uh, it is more dangerous. I I went up the ring. I thought the ropes were soft, but when I was on it, man, I could, I think I could do a a swanton bomb on top. I think it's because I'm a lighter person compared to the other wrestlers who are um, over the 180 to 200 plus in terms of uh, their weights. Mm-hmm. Except for like the high flyers like uh, Robin Sane. Yeah. Well, um, well, that explains the tape for me. Uh, then that I'm. You, know, I'm <laughs> we, you just spent like five minutes talking about <laughs> the um, tape on. I. Rope. I I spent like an entire day thinking about that 
rope. <laughs> I, because, uh, you know, that's not what I'm accustomed to. I see wrestling rings. I see the, you know, the typical. Well, you know, if, and if, stuff. If, some, if someone from MWF would be listening to this, man, maybe they could answer why. Uh, there are tapes on the ropes. Is it because they just want this certain color or is it because I, it, it has something else? I would be willing to do a special episode just for those ropes. <laughs> <laughs> just for me to, just to satisfy, so I, satisfy my curiosity. But it's not something that bothered me, uh, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. It is definitely not. And I think that's all you need if you're going to introduce yourself. The production of the Pyro the Titantron. I understand, man. It's very expensive to do that, and you have to start small and work your way up. It's and it's also for me, it's a unnecessary flashiness, you know. Yeah, um, even the WWE, they don't do pyro no more. Uh, ECW back then, they just had the curtains and stuff. Yeah. Um, I just, I just wish they gave them a better, a bigger area, <laughs> like this for all of them. For history con. No, no, no. I mean the backstage stuff because. Oh yeah. Spoilers? Can we discuss spoilers? <laughs> um, I'm not sure if we, we can. Can we talk about? Yeah, if, what if not, I can edit this out. <laughs> okay, because there's see. a there's a scene there where this guy gets jumped, and then this guy, once he's done trashing the guy, he goes out of the ring and he goes back to the <laughs> to the. He goes back to his girl. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think yeah. I I, I saw that. Uh, again, since we're still in the production side of things, so um, we're that gonna, is though. Uh, yeah, we're gonna release this maybe tomorrow, so history con is done. Um, <laughs> Robin Sane had a match with Koto Hero, and after the match, Robin Sane was standing up, so he's getting the wrestler's ovation, and I really applauded him for that. Then out of nowhere, and I'm in the live audience, I saw someone flying on the opposite side of the ring, giving him a drop kick. And it's Zayden Trudeau, and he's from PWR. He's one of their uh, upcoming stars, or if not the established stars already. Um, and he did that, and he cut a, a promo, which is good, which is amazing on my, in my opinion. Yeah. Then as soon as he goes down, <laughs> he just sat in side. view, right, w- where yeah. everyone saw him. See him. <laughs> and we're not saying this to put them down, but uh, you know the casual fans were like. Why did he sit there, man? I mean, if you are in yeah, en- I mean, enemy's <laughs> territory, man, I would have run away. You know, that's if you're being method with the storyline happening. But I guess history just gave them that specific area. Well, he, he could have at least went inside, right? Well, Mike Shannon, <laughs> Mike Shannon came up after and cut a promo on. So I guess that's why. <laughs> no, I mean... He could have hid, you know, just went inside just to create that illusion that he <laughs> went think... home. But he just sat there and everyone's just looking at him like he's being nice to the people. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm, I'm back to being a fan. Right. Uh, <laughs> and he was nice all throughout the sh- I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it was jarring for him to, or maybe that was... I think we're that. just saying this because we're like hardcore wrestling fans and, and if you are being uh, into the storyline. It's easy to overlook that when you're a wrestling fan because you create that imaginary barrier. Like, okay, the promo's done. He's out of the picture now. Time, all eyes on Sane again. Uh, but come on, we'll kill you to just go inside the the, the room that they gave you. They just, they created the the mini division there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you could have just went inside with the other wrestlers, stayed there for a bit, and then just went, just go out when everything is done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that is uh, the dedication to your character and stuff, being method in a way. Now let's go to the wrestlers since we talked about them. Okay. Uh, which wrestler stood out for you? Oh man. I don't have just one. I have a few. Okay. Um, let's talk about them one by one. Okay. The the Fabio guy. Uh, Fabio Makisi. Yeah, Fabio, man, that's he's amazing. Yeah. He's uh he's the he's the, the strungle every man. I think that's his storyline. Mm-hmm. Based on what I heard from his promos. Mm-hmm talking about how we are all privileged and stuff which is true and that's <laughs> that's the that's the bite that's that's where that's how you create a good heel you have to you have to create a heel who sounds like he's right, mm-hmm. right? so he did that and he, 
he stayed in character. Um, he counted the money that was given to him. <laughs> I was in, yeah, yeah, I was hoping that he would throw it at us <laughs> while we were standing. Uh, <laughs> I think it won't, man. Because when he was talking about privilege, you know, uh, I'm not too big for a twenty bucks <laughs> to throw it at us. I'll but but yeah, the <laughs> thing is, I think it's funnier because. I think the money that Tarek gave him, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't count it, but it doesn't look like it even reached 300, <laughs> man. It's like there's a hundred, a 50, then it's full of 20. All I'm saying is if he threw it at us, I would probably still go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's, it's a good thing because it shows that, you know, uh, in uh, boxing or in MMA, like Conor McGregor or Mayweather saying, Pay me hundred millions, and he's just like pay me two hundred, and I'm living the life. It's a nice touch to the character. Yeah, definitely, and you know, Fabio physically, he looks like a wrestler. Yeah, I mean, he's doing that capoeira thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's very, very uh, dynamic in that ring, and he sells very well. Um, definitely, he's he makes his opponent look really good. Um, yeah, he made. Uh, yeah, but he made Mr. Lucha's moves ten times more, plus the impact of the ring. I, I just can't stop talking about how good their ring is. And the ropes. <laughs> the ropes and the taped ropes. It all works. There's another guy that I like. He's the one with a weird mask. Oh, uh, uh, Morgan Vaughn. Like he's gonna Santa do? <laughs> Is he the one who, the, the one who? Yeah, Morgan Vaughn, the one. The who, the Lupang Hinero. You know, I, I'll be honest. I kind of hated them for doing that to to the wrestling team. <laughs> they were playing the. I know they have their own program at the side, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it kind of ruined the match because they had to break. We had to do the the national anthem. Man, that you know, I like the match. It's. Out of all the matches, I've, it's probably the one with the smoothest uh, back and forth. Um, the holds, the, the snappers. I think also the Philippine National Anthem skip helped rile the crowd after. Because the moment that the song finished, Ninja Ryujin run. And I think there was a hip toss that happened and the uh, crowd went wild. I think he's very uh, self-aware during that match. That he knew what to do. He didn't act like, oh. I would have said that too, because if it was a rookie wrestler, he would have just like continued the match and the crowd wouldn't care. They did for a while during the, the prayer and stuff. That's where the self-awareness thing came from, you know, like, hey, the crowd seems not to be into it. What's up? And I guess that's the time they realized there was a... Yeah, maybe they're noticing the faces. Uh, not sure if we should stand up or... Yeah. And they led that, and that's good. He had the crowd at this point. Yeah, but, oh, but so. good self-awareness for Morgan Vaughn. Good thing for Morgan Vaughn to at least realize that... Yeah, I agree. We could have derailed that match if it was any other guy. But this guy did... He stood out for me. There are probably other standout wrestlers there, but I liked how... He moved in the ring. He sold the, the moves well. He interacted with the crowd when he say, "Hey, I, I can afford a computer." <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> uh, great self awareness and very, very, very flexible in the ring. You can make him do anything. He's not too small. He's not too burly either. So you can make him do whatever you want. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, who else? Yeah, who else uh, stood out for you, man? We're all good. Um, obviously, the last guy. The, the main event? The super main event. The afternoon block was, I think, was a little better than the first. Uh, you're talking about Koto Hero and Robin Sane. Yes, both of them. It's a tie for them, at least for me. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about Robin first. Robin is uh, very talented. Um, we could watch them fight. <laughs> forever <laughs> yeah actually uh, uh, i hope they started the fight forever chant but um did they do that is that a thing or? yeah sometimes they do okay uh there koto hero they're better wrestlers than most throughout the night uh in terms of look I'm, I'm not sure what robin is going for why does he dress up like that i mean that's just the thing man <laughs> he's like supposed a... to be aladdin or yeah you know he I think he's going for that kind of Sabu look. Okay. Uh, how 
how about how about the Koto guy? He's he's a very talented in ring yeah, guy, a, but I don't get it. He has a he has a muse. He's a, not sure if he's supposed to be heelish or no. I, I don't think he has. He's not a heel, and he's from PWR or oh. he wrestled in PWR, and he's not wrestling as a heel there. So he just likes to bring his girlfriend around. Yeah, that's his real life girlfriend. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Nicole. As wrestlers, they're good. Uh, very good. Um, they they botched a bit, but yeah, you know, um, I I thought they were nice. I um, think the reason they botched is because they were more high risk in their match. You know, they they did more high flying moves. They did more uh, aerial stuff. There was all this guy, the ninja. He was also very good. Ninja Ryujin. Um, He's the uh, opponent of Morgan Vaughn. He's uh, I think they have good chemistry in the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, he did. I think he did botch the, uh, the upper that's hurricane the, rana. That's the big spot. He, yeah. He he yeah he botched that. But yeah, you know you could easily forget that. Um, everything else that happened, it's fast paced, so it's nice. Um, as opposed to the other stuff that we've seen. That, Anyone else that you? No, I thought all of them worked. Um, how about you? Man, Mr. Lucha. I saw him during day one. I liked his match. Cause really? They worked a different match okay. yesterday when you saw them. That's why. Uh, Mr. Lucha was faster because he fought Rob Insane. I think that's also the thing, man. If, if you're wor- working against a, a good worker, then you 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 tend to be better. Oh, that's plus points for Robin then. Uh well, but why do you like that Mr. Singh guy? He just seemed like a... I don't know if it was just the way he was booked. Uh... The booking was different on the second day. And what happened was Mr. Lucha was faster during the, the morning show during day one. And he was running. He was like going everywhere. And his finisher is known as the DVDX. And I, it's an original finisher. Who? <laughs> or I haven't seen that, it before. That's, that's from... It's like a power bomb that goes to an attitude adjustment kind of thing. He's a big guy, right? In, in lucha clothes, but he goes around and he makes manapo to the audience, <laughs> especially the elderly ones. So at least it shows the Filipinos touch. <laughs> so Mr. Lucha is good. Another one who I like, and it's during the first day because you weren't there. Um, he's from PWR, but he's Martivo. Okay. He's the uh, Rainbow Warrior, so he's an LGBT uh, wrestler. Okay, <laughs> he's really good, man. And I don't want to. Does he look like a rainbow? <laughs> I'll, I'll show you a photo right now, man. Martivo was good during that show because he controlled the crowd during the first day of HistoryCon. That's the morning block. You know they don't know what wrestling is yet, but. Martivo already uh, controlled the crowd. And another reason for that is because his opponent was Kyle Cizan. So Kyle Cizan is a uh, natural heel. And I yeah. guess... Oh, so he was being anti-gay? So yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. So this is Martivo. This is him. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought he was gonna wear a sash or... <laughs> well, he has a rainbow flag draped around him. Okay. But yeah, it's pretty much like this, man. It's not like how Rico was uh, during his wrestling stint or like <laughs> Bian Chuck. But he has like a different set list during HistoryCon, I guess, because it's a family show. I was hoping to see that, you know. It's like uh, a stink face, but she's twerking. It's a crowd pleaser, so it's it cute. looks nice, man. I'm, but I'm not sure how I should feel. About that. See, <laughs> isn't that patented? <laughs> why is he? Uh, I guess it's it's not for TV. That's why he, he isn't caught or something. But I like how he moves. Um, and he has like some good suplexes too. So okay, that's good for him. Aside from Martivo, I like Kyle Cizan in terms of his character. You know, he's he he wears this mouthpiece and he heckles the fans uh-huh. and says some stuff. Like during the match that you saw with Kyle Cizan, he was uh, berating uh, someone from the LGBT community. But 
when he was facing Martivo, he was berating like a normal guy. It's like a Sunduan Dayo kind of thing. And he has this mouthpiece that he wears and removes from time to time. Man, I don't know if that's sanitary or not. Because sometimes it just falls out wherever. Then he puts it back. Yeah, and that gets uh, the crowd going. Because I guess the crowd will think like if the referee stepped on it and it puts it in his mouth. Man, man that's bad for your oral health, right? <laughs> you definitely. <laughs> Kyle Season, <laughs> I got a tip for you, buddy. You're very good in the ring. Uh, you have good promo skills. But you need to prioritize oral health. I happen to know a guy who does teeth. <laughs> so... <laughs> If you're listening right now, I could give you the number to the clinic. Man, I'm kind of scared, man. If he goes there and he challenges me, man. You know, he's probably a nice guy in real life. He's not going to challenge you or, or berate you. Yeah, but I could... Yeah, I think he needs a new set of mouthpiece, though. Yeah. Or a container for it, you know. But yeah. It, but it's less gangsta when you don't spit it out, right? Yeah. I think it's how do you spell his name? Is it Kyle Cezanne? I I think so, and I hope so because that's in line with his character. <laughs> and aside from that, who else, man? Uh, there's a lot. Gig Striker, he's oh, that yeah. ni- that nineties action star. That guy's entertaining. Oh, but I'm not sure if we saw the same. You saw him in the other night, day one. Yeah, I saw him uh, day one in the morning, and he's pretty good. Okay. Rex Lawin too, you know, is the Filipino yeah. strong style. And, you know, aside from them, uh, I think uh, wrestling wouldn't work if, if you don't have a good hype man. And Tarek is very good at hyping the crowd. Yeah. The announcer is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, uh, what's his name, man? I forgot. His Sid. Name. Sid, yeah. Just don't know why they make him wear that thing. I think it's just to show it that it's a Filipino. He, he looks like the mayor of Valenzuela. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is it, uh, Rex got chill. Yeah, and sure. But... He has these Chinese features. So. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Sir? His last name might be Gachelian. Uh, but I did, I did see that too. <laughs> That's all I was thinking about while I was watching him. He looks familiar. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just me who noticed that, but good thing you saw it too, man. Now we go to the wrestling. What do you think of the uh... overall? Mm-hmm. I thought it was good. Um, there, there were a lot of really good matches, especially. Yeah, what's your favorite match? The last one. Uh, the last one on the afternoon block. Um, the also the first match. The guy with a with a book. <laughs> Oh yeah, Joe Marley one. Yeah, we forgot to talk about it, man. He's and Aldrin Richard. I thought their match was really smooth. Yeah, you know, went well. Uh, Alden Richards was in the main stage. What if Aldrin Richard just came there and have face to face with Victor Magtungo himself, man? That's that would have been sick. That would have been a moment. They had Kuya Kim the other day, right? Yeah, yeah, Kuya Kim was there. Did he cut a promo with the wrestlers? Or? I don't know. I think we'll find out if we watch Matang Lawin. Okay. Oh, it didn't happen during the, the show. I wasn't there when it happened, so okay. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I like the Koto Hero and Robin Singh. That's the reason why. Um, Robin Singh, I think, has a lot of mileage on him. He fought Ho Ho Loon. And he's from the Crusade Classic, and he I think he was on the first uh, 205 Live show. I also liked how he sold the moves. Like, mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like uh, he oversold it. Um, that was nice. Um, standouts. I'm sure, all the, <clears throat> I'm sure all of them had good matches on their first day. Um, but standout for me was the afternoon block especially yeah you know uh, the crowd and i think they amped up the action because they knew that a lot of people will be watching during that time the morgan guy uh, i really like that match morgan and ninja i thought that <laughs> even was... with the <laughs> Lufang in the no area. i i especially liked it because of that uh the the, the wrestling is much better mm-hmm. um it's faster um, oh man, we forgot to mention uh, the grunge guy. The holds. The grunge guy. Oh, uh, Frankie 13, man. Yeah. Here's the thing. I like him. I think he's a talented guy. Um, but I don't think I watched the, the right match that day. 
No, I guess you're right. Just my take, because I mean, I think I think he did a great job selling the the foot, uh, his leg. I think it's his knee, yeah. Yeah, his knee, but I yeah, don't know. I think he was good on his uh, first. Yeah, he fought in the first uh, day. I, I like that match more than I did the second. I think it it has something to do with the storytelling and the proportion. I think uh, they could have played that uh, Goliath, David the, Goliath. The, the Kyle guy is uh, a small guy. He's good, but I don't think he can take that. You know, look like they are an equal footing. Um, maybe they can play it like that, like make him weasel out, you know? Like, yeah, I think, yeah, that, that would have been better, you like know? Like, outsmart, because there's smaller guys who are wily. Maybe they could they could have done that angle. Yeah, I I, to- I think I see it now, but again, we're not bookers, but... Yeah, what do I know? Oh, what? <laughs> well, that could have been a good <laughs> dynamic. That's just our two cents, y'all. You're MWF, you're doing a good job, man. And I know you do... You'll improve vastly. The wrestling is good, even when it's bad. Um, on on purpose, I mean. Yeah. There's this guy who uh, who wears a suit. I forgot his name. Gus <laughs> Global. I Gus. Yeah. I marked out when I when he did the people's elbow. <laughs> this, uh, that's how you create a character. Um, and that's like a, a fan thing, you know. It's something that people are familiar with it's fun you know he just tags in when he wants to he takes a few slaps and then he just tags back in i just don't i don't know can we talk about some stuff we're not happy about sure man yeah this uh, is, i think they want to hear all sides of the story could have maybe gotten a more dynamic partner uh, during his tag match the lawin guy no, I think uh, the storyline is that, you know, Gus is like Paul Heyman and then Rex Lowen is his Brock Lesnar. Yeah, but the the Brock Lesnar, I'm sorry, the the, the Lowen, uh, the Lowen guy, sorry, he was getting worked, like he was getting beat uh, half of the match. Mm. He didn't seem like he was the... Yeah, yeah. That's my issue with that match. It wasn't much of a story... Yeah, much he, of a story. he could have been that uh, dominant monster. He 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 could have. He is that dominant ma- monster if you watch his other matches. But he could have beaten you know just spent the entire match beating on that other guy so they could rate because you were halfway through the match I was siding with them. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Gus to do something stupid, or, and he did deliver on that card. But uh, that wasn't the intention. You're supposed to hate him, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> I think it's like the Ricardo Rodriguez, you know, he, he was created for people to boo, but you know, and if he wrestles, it's so funny, it's good. I mean, no, in the context of the story, of the match, you have to have the the, the person you want the, the people to, to go for. And then you're supposed to have the, another guy who... Who will take the? Uh, who would do the beating? <laughs> we are such wrestling experts. <laughs> no, it's just uh, it's just the fries. I guess <laughs> we've been eating fries all day yesterday. I know. Uh, there were also some awkward spots. I think. Which like what man? Like they were gonna whip him in the corner or put a rust hold. Uh, yeah, there were some parts wherein they don't know what's gonna happen or they forgot what's going to happen. The, with the the action star guy, uh, he he whip him in the corner and then he do a like a jumping punch thing. And yeah, it's the FPJ. <laughs> that was good, but when the rest of the stuff that he did, like when he whipped, he whipped oh yeah, the kept the whipping poetry the, in motion. Then it was like uh, I I suppose it would be nice if he did Superman it punch faster, like if he showed a little more intensity in doing it, but. I guess the timing was off, and I'm just saying this in a more, not to hate or anything. I I like the product. Don't get me wrong, but his character could be gold, man. That is sure. I like I like how they thought of the Fabio, Lucha match. You know, it was more MMA based. You know, more on holds, continuous holds. I'm on the fence the with that. Striking. So maybe I didn't watch the right match. He was not really selling the the, the offense. 
The finish was uh, underwhelming. I mean, they didn't build up well to it. Just like kicked him, then go, went for the pin. No, that my issue with him was early on in the match. I was mm-hmm. thinking he was a big deal, like, um, like they got him from from NJPW or something. <laughs> he was wearing this flashy costume, mm-hmm. and when they got him in the ring, he was no selling the the clothesline or the kicks. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure if it was part of his character yeah i thought he was going to play more of the monster but yet surprisingly it's like he he's the one jobbing the match because when it was his turn to do the big moves at least some offense i'm not sure if that's done on purpose but (laughs) (laughs) i guess they were just avoiding this the the typical formula yeah exactly you know uh, kurt angle and samoja tried it once you know it's hit or miss but you know a for effort. He should probably take a, bri- a break from fries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we took too many fries. Now. <laughs> I mean, we ate fries when we get, we got for lunch, and then we ate potato corner, then we ate fries when we went home. Overall, man, what what's your thought of the product? I would see it again. They usually charge, if I'm not mistaken, like uh, two fifty to three fifty per show. Do you think that price is good enough for the action? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, any sport that would potentially lead to someone losing a head or <laughs> yeah, or a toe probably deserves a yeah. You could pay, I guess you could charge them with that, but they have to uh, really polish the matches. Yeah, I think that's a good observation, man. You have to polish, except for the Robin saying Koto here. I think that was good match man I, I would I would give it a four out of five stars even with the botches right I think the botch from Koto Hero and Robinson was because the ropes was uh, again softer than it should be but overall it's a, it's a nice show um, it was my first time to see it and if you're into wrestling you'll you'll enjoy it I'm certain of that you check them out on facebook manila wrestling federation or mwf insider blog.com now before i let you go man you got something to get off your chest anything to promote anyone to greet oh uh i'd like to promote this clinic i know <laughs> <laughs> it's in Quezon city it's in the private subdivision so it's super safe <laughs> you can park your car in front of the house it uh, without you know a fear of losing your car or your wheels super safe super nice people accommodating staff and a very handsome dentist <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you know the name of the clinic RP Gonzalez Dental Clinic <laughs> Quezon City look it up in Facebook there's a contact number there just uh, Clearly, that dentist should just work on being a dentist. And not... Clearly, he should have. You know, in other radio shows, they have this. They have this guest doctor, who, <laughs> <laughs> like they were talking about yeah. chismis the, the entire yeah. time, and then they would bring in this doctor yeah. to take in uh, medical concerns. I think you should do that for the same show. Uh, half of it would be. Uh, uh, more than half of it to be wrestling, and then you can save maybe five minutes for <laughs> dental concerns. Well, uh, I guess RP Gonzalez Dental Clinic. Check that out. That's well, it's nice. really great to have you, man, and I think we're going to do this more often, but I guess I'm going to be calling you. Sure, just, just let me know. Uh, I love watching wrestling, um, especially now. Uh, ha- after seeing the local scene yeah the local scene is thriving MWF man that's that's a really amazing show right now and I guess that's it for today's show Fight Sport Manila y'all have a great day okay bye